Um, I remember the day I realized I was a lonely preneur. That's good, but it seems contrived because okay, then, well, okay. because then we're going to be sitting out there going, Oh, they're going to tell us a story about a lonely. Cause, cause here's what I will tell you on that. Timothy okay. is that, um, I took a, I, I spent a huge sum of money a couple of years ago because mm -hmm. somebody took, really persuaded me that they could make me, um, a successful sell from the stage speaker. Well, mm -hmm. Truthfully, I don't have a I don't have a course. I don't sit down and say, well, I sell X, Y, Z or I have this to sell. I mean, I sell how to be a better public speaker. I sell how to uh, close more deals, but mm -hmm. it's not a product that you can really sell it at, at that point in time. And, and I spent a big glob of money and the guy, um, his whole deal was you have to tell a story from the stage. Well, I've known that for 40 years, sure, yeah. but his was always like you start off with the. I want to tell you a story about the time that I struggled, right, with X, Y, Z. Okay. Well, then we're all sitting in the audience going, why do I care? Right? Why do I okay. care? And, and that is what, he's, what he wants you to say is, I, I want you to relate to me because I have struggled like you have struggled. I have put myself in your shoes, and you should put yourself in my shoes while I tell the story of how I went from uh, failure to success. And you can do the same thing if you use my uh, methods. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. And so that's so, mm -hmm. to me, it's so trite and overused that too many people come out saying exactly what you said, which is, uh, uh, let me tell you a story about the time that I, right? Okay. And we're like, e so it's better if you, if you say, you know, one of the things that really bugs me. And then you go ah, into a little. I like yeah, that. I like yeah. that. Very, very genuine, very authentic, not contrived. Okay. That's good, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Cause this sometimes, I mean, even one of my best things happened, I was on my way to, and this is going back about 15 years, but I was on my way to do a talk and a couple things happened on the freeway and I got there and I was, I was like, cause I used to have a little bit of road rage. And mm -hmm. so when I got there, I was still being bugged by that. And so I started off the whole thing by going, were you on the highway just about 15, 20 minutes ago? Because <laughs> you probably really pissed me off. <laughs> and the people were Excellent. all like, whoa. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. And that led into a real good almost conversation. And that's what you have to have is a conversation from the stage. Most okay. people want to have a talk. And I say you have to have a, that's the difference between me. I, you call it storytelling. I call it story -tizing. I do a whole course on story -tizing. Okay. And the story -tizing course simply goes like this, which is uh, you tell your story, but you, it's all about you. I tell the same story, but it's all about you. Okay. So mm -hmm. when I tell the story, I go, have you ever, just like that, have you ever been on the highway and really struggled with this? Are mm -hmm. you like me when this happens to you? Do you think this? And so if you involve the audience with 50% more questions than most people ever even think of asking. Okay. They're constantly, because you have to answer a question in your head. Right. You have to right. answer it. If I say, what's your name? Don't say it out loud. What's your name? You're still thinking your name. If right. I say, what do you think of the person next to you? And then the first thing that probably goes through your mind is, well, which side, right or left, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you say, so let's pick your right side. Without saying it out loud, what do you think of the person to your right? And of course, everybody turns to their right because they have to answer the question. And they probably never looked at the person to their right. I mean, you sit, sit, you sit down next to them, maybe you said hello, maybe you introduce yourself, but probably not. And so it forces you to look at the person next to you, and they're already looking the other way. So you have to evaluate only what you can see from the backside. Wow. So it's things like that that, that will wow, really help your public speak. that's an interesting speech. statement. So in... Unless they're in extreme trauma or pain, or they're extremely self-absorbed, mm -hmm. or not paying attention at all, they generally have to answer the question. Yeah. Huh. I like it. That's a really yeah. good tip. Oh, good. Thanks. Yeah.